Hey guys, how are you? So, you are having a hard time finding a job. You study code for perhaps two, three, even four years, I've seen. You study data structures and algorithms. You've done tons of tutorials. You've done code competitions. But when you go in for the job interview, it's a crash and a burn. What can you do to actually land a job and what is going on? Why can't you get a job in the first place? In this video, I'm going to give you all the details. All right, first of all, the number one thing prospective employers are looking for is practical experience. It's that catch 22, that classic catch 22, where they want you to have experience, but how can you get experience if you don't have a job? Here's the strategy in a nutshell. You go out there and you do a few projects for free for some small business. In fact, the type of coding projects you do for free to gain that experience is really not that important because what you're going to learn as a pro developer, a big part of the job is actually working with a third party, being, being able to communicate with them, gather requirements, execute on those requirements, and deliver something. Even if it's a simple website, if it's a WordPress install, or maybe you're doing a simple credit operations interfacing with PayPal or Stripe, these are all relevant because again, the employer is looking for your pr proof that you can actually do the real thing. You have to look at it like this. If you are doing tutorials and code competitions, that's kind of like playing a video game, a car racing video game, versus actually driving a real car. Driving a real car, racing a real race, is actually building something for real, which is a very different thing than playing a video game, right? That's tutorials. See, the problem with tutorials is that you're just following along. You're not actually exercising real coding developer skills. A big part about being a developer is being able to break down problems into simple components that you can execute on with code. Doesn't matter the language, whether it's JavaScript, C Sharp, Java, Python, PHP, not Ruby, it doesn't matter. All that matters is that you execute on the requirements of the project. And that is one of the, that's probably the number one reason why you can't get a job is because you've actually never built anything for real. You have to build something for real. Again, let me emphasize, when I say you have to build something for real, it doesn't mean you have to build the next Facebook or the next Instagram. It could be simple little projects. And in fact, with my mentees, I have them build whatever. It doesn't really matter. I say, go out there, go see a local independent coffee shop a local independent garage, uh, a painter, whatever. Put up their website, uh, update their website, uh, help them structure their social media and interface with Shopify. This is all relevant. Again, to emphasize, the work that you actually do is not relevant. The fact that you can talk to these people, extract requirements, break it down, put something together that's functional, that is the key. Let me comment on the need for algorithms and data structures. This is one of the big myths out there in the YouTube land. Just because Google wants people to do algorithms and data structures and some, maybe some other fangs, uh, the fact of the matter is in day-to-day -day software development, 99.999% of software development, algorithms and data structures are pretty much irrelevant. There may be some businesses out there that will test you for that, perhaps, but I would think that's a minority. The other mistake that people make when looking for jobs is they're noobs, fresh out of the coder boot camps, and with little to no experience, and they start applying for high-end jobs at huge organizations. It's like coming out of the gym, you know, done a bunch of pad work, maybe one or two sparring matches, and expect to fight Mike Tyson for the title your first time out. The reality of the situation is, is that with developers, 
most of the training is actually on the job. Most, let me say that again. Most of the training is literally on the job. The key to this game is to get your foot in the door at some entry level job. Doesn't matter what it is, as long as it's coding, you want to get your foot in the door because on the job, you're going to see your learning will go like this. And as you start to learn, your salary will go up. So the key to the whole software development career, the secret, the secret sauce, is to get your foot in the door as quickly as possible. Start learning, start earning, and what you'll see is that your value as a developer will increase exponentially over the first year or two. And as a result, you'll see that your salary will start to increase as well. The big salary gains are made in the first three to four years. So you start seeing a jump after the first year, a big jump after the second year, a big jump after the third, you get the idea. So those first few years is where you're really learning your craft, you're developing your skills, you're developing your reputation. Once you get past that hurdle of getting that first job, doing that first year of development, then the game becomes much easier for you because then you will have a really nice resume, a nice proven track record. So if you are a PERMA student, you keep on doing tutorials, you keep on doing uh, code competitions, which to me is a total waste of time. Instead, focus on getting a job. So to end this video, I want to talk about the job of getting a job. A lot of people think that they'll learn how to code and then Bob's your uncle, bing, bang, boom, you're going to get a job like this. It doesn't work that way. The process of getting a job is a learned process as well. You have to assume you're going to have many failures, you're going to have to go to many interviews, and you're going to get rejected a lot of times. That's normal, par for the course, as they say out here in North America. So here are the steps you should take when applying for jobs. Number one, study your target business that you're applying to before making the application. Understand their business, understand the technologies they're using. Make sure that your skill sets and your resume aligns with what they are doing. So if you're applying to a company that's doing a lot of React work, as an example, make sure you have some React work you can show. Make sure you restructure your resume so React is at the top, not buried down low. That's number one. Number two, if and when you get an interview, be sure to follow up with them or after they follow up with you and they say, eh, we're not interested. Follow up and say, listen, what was the reason why you did not take me as the candidate? Let me know. Let her, please let me know what I was lacking. And most people don't answer back. Take that as free information. You can build upon that. If they come back to you and not make a job offer, then you don't have to do that, of course. But if they don't make the offer and they come back to you, then ask that question, because that's going to help you to refine your skills in terms of job interviews, and you'll figure out where you're lacking overall, and so you can work on that. Final tip, wait for them to get back to you. Don't start hounding them and chasing them after that interview. They'll get back to you, whether it's positive or negative. You got to be patient. Here's my final, final tip. Apply to more than one job at a time. Don't fall in love with a job prospect. Apply here and apply there and apply over here and apply over there. Doesn't matter. If you're lucky enough and you get more than one offer, fantastic. You can play them off each other. So there you go. Those are my tips. I hope you found them useful. If you have any questions, if you have any disagreements, comment below. If you like this video, you know how it is. Give it the old likes. It's good for the Google algorithms. I would appreciate it. Thanks for watching. I hope you found it useful. I'm Uncle Steph, by the way.